If you're a business owner, you know these sounds mean sales. And from the sound of it, your business is growing. Whether you're fulfilling orders from your home office or warehouse, Stamps.com helps you stress less about mailing and shipping and spend more time doing what you love most. Listening to ASMR. <clears throat> I mean, growing your business. But as you grow, so does the need for efficiency. Stamps.com simplifies your shipping and mailing process. Import orders from wherever you sell online. Find the lowest rates with the fastest delivery times. Instantly deliver tracking updates to your customers. And buy shipping and mailing supplies when you run low. Save time and money on mailing and shipping. Get started at Stamps.com today with code PROGRAM for a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. You ready to ride? I thought you'd never ask. Now streaming on Paramount Plus, it's the new original series, Lawmen, Bass Reeves. Bass dedicated to justice. From executive producer Taylor Sheridan, co creator of Yellowstone, starring executive producer and Emmy Award nominated actor David Oyelowo, it's the untold story. I'm warning you. Of the greatest American lawman. Your wicked days are done. Lawmen, Bass Reeves, new original series, now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. For the first time ever, Sammy the Bull Gravano tells his story. This is our thing. Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, 1985. Before the hit on Paul. The kid owes me $90,000. Something went about a car. He said, let me recoup that money. He owes it to me personally. I wasn't about to be quiet any longer. I said, listen, if it's 90000 that you're worried about, you're worried about money. I lost my brother. I'll give you the 90,000. Give me this fucking kid. What are you going to do? I'm going to kill him. And I'm going to chop him in 15, 20 different fucking pieces, spread his body all over Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. So everybody knows you kill one of my fucking people. It's exactly what the fuck I'll do. And I'm going to tell you another thing. I don't give a fuck who he's with. The minute I find him or see him, I'm going to kill him and I'm going to kill whoever the fuck he's with. See, I mean, that's pretty harsh fucking words. He could be walking around with a friend. I said I don't give a fuck who he's with. They're going to die with him. He turned to Frankie. Frankie stared him right in the fucking eyes and shook his fucking head. Anybody he's with is going to go. Anybody. That's what he told you, right? Pay attention. I'm telling it to you, too. He knew we were on fucking fire. He backed up and he left. They didn't give him to us. Some of this story I found out years later. They did kill him. They killed him. It's like they didn't want to give me the satisfaction of killing this piece of shit. Junkie, steroid-headed asshole. They did it. And they buried him in Staten Island on the beach. A few feet under the sand. When I was in prison years later, I was with this guy, Mario Polagreco. He was in on the hit. He told me that they were with this legitimate family. They called him to a meeting with Greg Scapa Jr. They brought him to the meeting. 
They shot him in the chest. He went down. And then they strangled him. And he told me that they buried him. He was one of the guys who buried him on the beach. He was there when they actually killed him. So at this time, I know the entire story. What happened then and the entire story. I took care of his wife and his children. His son, little Joey D'Angelo, was with me. I almost like adopted him. One of his sons committed suicide over this murder. His daughter OD. She became a junkie after this murder, and she OD'd years later. Karen became an alcoholic. When I took my wife to the funeral, she fainted. That's how close we all were. We would go, me and my wife would go over Karen's home, his wife. We helped them fix and clean it and change it around and we kept them, try to keep them strong. Little Joe was with me all the time, day and night. He became a made guy eventually. After I cooperated, I left, he even went on a hit. Any place I went after his father was dead, and he was a very strong, very powerful kid. He was like my shadow, always, always around me. This is the story that I lived through. I'm living through it again, just talking about it. It just breaks my fucking heart. Not only was little Joe by my side all the time, but Peruta, his wife came to my wife and said, Peruta used to go to the track every day. He loved going to the track. He loved the ponies, the horses. But he stopped going once time he died. I went to him and told him, Joe, how come you don't go to the track no more? He says, Sammy, you lost your Luca Brazzi. I got to fill those shoes. I got to be with you every minute of the fucking day. Bensonhurst, Berkeley. I grew up with Nicky Cowboy all my life, I know, as kids. He wasn't with the Rampers, he was on another gang that stood in another, it was in our neighborhood, it was in a different section, but uh, he was a tough guy all his life. And he was always in trouble. Drinking, taking a little drugs, what a tough son of a bitch. There's a bunch of stories about him one day, he came in my after-hour club, and uh, some street guys came to it. They weren't made guys, but they were street guys. They came in, dressed up, with a couple of girls who were all dressed up. Nice-looking girls. He's sitting in a booth, Nicky Cowboy, and I'm standing. It's late at night, tired. We're working this place, I'm doing every fucking thing. I'm a fucking bartender, I'm a bouncer, I'm working the card game in the back, it's, I'm exhausted. So I'm standing there and it's, I'm hoping that it'll start to ease up and we can close and I can take a break. And I see Nicky Cowboy get up. 
I know he's a little drunk. So I'm watching. He walks right over to these people. And he grabs this girl by the arm, turns her around. I think he's got his hand on her ass or whatever the fuck he's doing. There's an uproar immediately. I come running the fuck over. And I grab him and I fling him away from them. What the fuck are you doing? These guys got a little hot. And I said, oh, t take it easy, bro. Take it easy. Get him the fuck out of here. I, I told the other people, my guys in the place. Get him the fuck out of here. Motherfucker, these guys are with these girls. What's wrong with you? So Nicky was, it was called Nicky Cowboy, and he really lived up to that fucking name. He was a cowboy, always into something. Doing stupid shit, doing stuff. He comes to my club and he says, Nick, Sammy. We know each other all our lives. You got me out of trouble a, f a bunch of times. I want to join your crew. I want to be with you. I said, Nicky, you got a lot of bad habits. My crew is, we're, we're pretty strong with, you know, a little bit about drinking, you can drink, but we don't want you slobbering around drunk or out of order. Definitely no drugs. Not only dealing drugs, but especially taking drugs. And every once in a while, I understand you take drugs too. I, I don't allow that. And if somebody does that in my crew, they're going to pay the price. They all know it. So I don't know if you really want to be part of my crew. Sammy, I swear. No drugs. I drink a little bit, but I won't get drunk. And if I get drunk, you just give me a kick in the ass and I'll go home. You're not with nobody, which I knew. He was more independent. <sighs> so anyway, I took him on. To be part of my crew. One quick story with him is that I had an after hour club on 86th Street on 20th Avenue. The name of the after our club was 2020. And he would go there and just watch my club and talk with some of the guys who were there, bouncers. Everybody there was with me. It was my joint. Street people knew that. Everybody knew that. One night he comes out and there's a guy beating up a girl right in front of the place. He grabs the guy and he flings him away from the girl. The girl starts yelling at Nicky. He's my boyfriend, leave him the fuck alone. Nicky's like in a little bit of shock. He's trying to help her. And she's yelling at him. So he says, well, you could do whatever the fuck you want. But not here. There's good people who own the place, meaning street people, old wise guys. There's good people who own the joint. Keep your fucking argument somewhere, somewhere else. Him and the girl leave. They go around the corner to a car, park car. The kid gets a, a gun from the car. Comes scooting around the corner and shoots Nicky Cowboy right in the chest. Turns around and runs. Project COPE provides access to recovery counseling and connections to food support, housing services, and job assistance. Building resilience begins at copefl.com. This initiative has been brought to you by the Florida Department of Children and Families. Every year, you look forward to the holidays, except for the crowds and noise and traffic. This holiday season, escape to Martin County for an unspoiled Florida holiday getaway. Enjoy natural beauty, picturesque parks, small town charm, and over 20 miles of uncrowded Atlantic coastline. Martin County offers a holiday hidden gem you'll remember with all the relaxation you deserve. Plan your escape to martinmemories.com. I get a call. 
Sammy. Nicky got shot. He's by 2020. I go fucking flying in. I go there. I see him. He's bleeding. I throw him in the car with a couple of my guys. I rip my T-shirt off and I put it on his chest to stop the bleeding. I tell him, drive him to the Coney Island Hospital. I said, Nikki, relax. Take deep breaths and relax. We'll get you to the hospital. You just run the fuck in. Somebody shot you, you don't know who. You know the, you know the drill. I got it, Sam, you know, no problem. Do you know this fucking kid? No, I, I, I don't know who the fuck he is. I never saw him before. Okay, we'll check it out. Let's get you in the hospital. We get him in the hospital, and he's in the hospital. This kid is with a pack of fucking young kids who are with this guy, Georgie Rush, who is a May guy, and he's in the Genovese family. This kid, Robert Scapacci, calls Louis Melito. Louis Melito was with us at that time. And he calls me up and he said, I'm gonna come and pick you up. Why? Scapacci's telling me some crazy shit. I'm gonna pick you up and we're gonna go over his house in Brooklyn. And we do that. We talk to Scapacci and he says, this kid who shot Nicky Cowboy went to this little pack of kids that stay together. And they're not babies, they're in their 20s when I say kids. And they went to this guy who was their man, Georgie Rush, it's a made guy in the Genovese family, and told him about the incident. They told him your name. It's Sammy's Club. Georgie Rush gave them permission to kill you. To kill me? Yeah. How do you know? I was at the meeting with them. I'm friends with them. He says they're going to have a car, a Volvo or something like that. It's maroon or red, and he gives the plate number. Be careful with this car. And he gives us a whole story. Me and Louis Molito leave. We're going to drive back to Staten Island, and he's going to drop me off home. So I said, do you believe that? Is that, is that possible? that a friend of ours would do something like this. Does this whole thing make sense? I don't really know. But he says he was at the meeting. This kid ain't gonna lie to us. This kid's scared of us, Sammy. He's not gonna lie to us. Something like this. I said, I don't know if I buy it. I don't, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Maybe he wants to hurt one of his friends and he gives us some bullshit story thinking we're gonna attack all of them, you know what I mean? Some bullshit like that. I don't know. We're back in Staten Island and we're going home. I live on a dead end sh street. There's a cul sac. You one way in and one way out. We're pulling to my street and way in the back in the cul sac, there's a car parked and the lights go on. Doesn't really mean anything, I mean, to me, uh, all that much. It starts coming up slow. Louis Melito says, do you have that piece of paper with the car and the plates and all that bullshit? Why? Yeah, I got it. It looks like it's a reddish car, maroon car. What's the plate on the thing? I give him the plate number. Louis says, oh my God, it's the plate. It's them. I said, hit the fucking gas and just crash into them. 
we don't have a fucking gun. If this is the hit team, we're done. Crash into them, do something. We gotta do something. Bluff. Or they'll get aggressive and they'll make the move and we're, we're done. I can't even back the fuck out of here. Or well, you can't. He hits the gas and he goes forward. They swerve around us. There's two or three guys, four guys maybe, in the car. I tell Louie, make a U-turn. Go after them, chase them. Chase them, I wanna get a closer look. They're flying down the main avenue, Victory Boulevard, and we're not too far behind them. We're flying. The light turns red, they go right through it. Right on the corner, there's a squad car. Louie hits the brakes. We were going so fast, we skid halfway through the fucking light. But they didn't give a fuck about us. They saw him go flying. The cop car went after them. What do you want me to do? Louis asked me. Get everybody together. Game on. We meet up. My whole crew is together. Reach out and get that, this crew of kids. I tell Louie, get back to Scapage. Get all their names. I go put this on record with Tato, again, right back to Paul Castellano. And there's a name, Georgie Rush, who's a May guy in the Genovese family, who gave them permission to take me out. Paul says, slow down with this. I'm gonna make an appointment with them. I know who this Georgie Rush is. I'm gonna send Tommy Bellotti with you. Louis Melito, you could go with him. And we'll meet with these people. But Sammy, I want him to talk, Tommy, to talk. Before this meeting takes place, we find out who the kid is and where he lives. He lives in a, an apartment house and uh, a Parkinson's car in the basement. I set up on him right away. I ain't holding nothing up. I'm gonna kill this kid. We have walkie-talkies. Sammy, the car just pulled in. It's this kid. I'm on another walkie-talkie. Get ready. He's with a girl, a young girl. Back up. Back up. Don't make a move. Don't do this. Say, you sure? Don't do this. We'll get him another time. Or we got to kill Hutto. Back up. We back off. We let him and I'll go. Not that I let him go. I I'll let her go. She's got nothing to do with this. Meeting is made. This guy, Georgie Rush, his captain is the guy who owns Umberto's clam house. Matty the horse. Mario Giganti is going to be there. Matty the horse is there. Georgie Rush is there. I'm there. Tommy Bellotti is there. Louis Melito is there. There's a couple of other guys for security reasons. They're not in the meeting, but they're on the peripheral. They're on the outside, making sure nobody walks into this meeting. 
I already know all their names. They're all a half of half of them are a bunch of junkies. They do drugs, they take drugs. He's probably fucking whacked out of his face when he came around the corner and shot Nikki. Nikki was just trying to protect the girl. I'm fucking steaming hot, but I'm told Tommy will do the talk. Mario Giganti starts the conversation off and says, my brother, Chen, sent me here not to discuss this, but to listen and report back to him. So it's up, the boss of the Genovese family is in this, and Castellano's in this, Tato's in this. This is a big deal. We get into the conversations and everything. Tommy accuses them, they're a pack of junkies. All these kids are with you. Can't deny it, he admits. Tommy tells him, we have people, witnesses, saying that you gave them permission to kill Sam. I was quiet. And he said, when they said a guy named Sammy, I thought it was a Jew, a Jewish guy. I didn't even give Tommy a chance to respond. I responded immediately. That's what you would do if it was a Jew. It doesn't matter, you would just kill the guy. When they were in the fucking room, your pack of fucking junkies were in the room. They shot a fucking guy for nothing to, because he was trying to protect the girl and he didn't get physically involved. So that's okay with you, number one. Number two, don't you have a captain, a Gabaragine, named Sammy Meatballs? What if somebody came to me and said, I had an argument with this guy, Sammy, and I told him I'd kill him? You would have killed one of your captains. You didn't even find out who the fuck Sammy was? Matty the horse's head was hanging. It was embarrassing, even what he was saying. It's, it, that's no fucking excuse whatsoever. Mario Giganti spoke and said, I told you I was here not to talk or get involved in this conversation. But I will say this, I heard enough. You guys could continue talking because I'm gonna leave or meeting over and I'll go report back. You guys could go report back where to Paul and whoever you have to talk to. Meeting was over. Nothing happened. No nothing. Georgie Rush's head floated up in Long Island on the beach. Not his body, just his head. There was a bullet hole in his head. So they obviously killed him for what he did. Paul said, there's another meeting. Chin wants to talk to you, Sammy, alone. Do you insist upon having a Gabrigine come with you? No. I'll go meet with him. I know him. I'll meet with him. I went and meet with him. We shook hands. He's a boss. Gave the utmost respect. He talked for a while. That thing with Georgie Rush, that part of the beef is over. I already knew his head floated up. I said, that's fine. He says, how do you feel? I'm gonna kill the rest of those kids. 
I'm going to kill the rest of them. They know who I was, Jen, when they went and asked for permission. They knew I was a friend. Wave goodbye to crowded holiday destinations and say hello to the serene beaches of Martin County, Florida. With sun, surf, and 22 miles of uncrowded coastline, Martin County is the hidden gem of South Florida. This holiday season, enjoy a slice of paradise where you can bask in small town charm, explore vibrant arts, and savor the local flavors, making memories as you go. Escape to Martin County for an unspoiled Florida getaway. MartinMemories.com it is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper, a woohoo, -er, a hand clapper, a high fiver? I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we prohibited by law. See terms.